Yes, yes. yes. five yes. more. Yes. Thank you. Are this measure these up? Yes. Don't let the excitement and enthusiasm of these second graders at the Winship Elementary School in Brighton fool you. That's math they're doing. They may be doing it in an unusual way, but it's math. I like more math than doing other papers. Like, math is my favorite thing. Okay, we'll get that up there, and it looks like it's your turn. Uh, my turn. Not to be confused with the new math, or modern math, that became popular in the 60s. This new, new math teaches kids traditional math concepts using toy-like rods and blocks to enhance their understanding of shapes, sizes, and numbers. They're actually holding the numbers, and they're working with them, and they're moving them around and shifting them, and they're... They have, they have something concrete that represents the numbers that they'll later use pencil and paper to represent. Little, big, big, little, what comes next? With the base 10 blocks used by the second graders in the counting game, and these Cuisinia rods used by the students in this bilingual kindergarten class, problem solving is far less problematic than it would be if the youngsters were being pressured to memorize numbers and equations the way their parents did. And I have a very tricky question. If the white rod is number one, which one will be two? Jaime says the red one is the same size as two white ones. Is that true? Yeah! Well, then what do you think? Should the red one be two? Yeah! Oh! Teacher Mary Costello believes that this new way of teaching math is nothing short of revolutionary, allowing youngsters to actually touch and feel their way to an understanding of what numbers are all about. The kids have got to go from concrete to pictorial to abstract. This new math is making students out of the teachers as well. What's the brown rod, Ellie? Uh, I guess it is. Eight. How do you know it's eight? This Thursday, almost 200 teachers from 11 elementary schools, including the Winship, will be plugged in to this Boston Neighborhood Network cable cast. Rita Williams will be one of the teachers learning how to use the blocks and rods in class. I'm very enthusiastic. I have some friends that um, attended the workshop last year, and they told me that if I didn't attend any other workshop this year, this was the one to attend. For some kids, this concrete thing before we start using five, four. Now, sure, eventually they get older and we put these blocks away. Oh, we can't use these all our life. But maybe at the beginning, then this gave that young child a chance to say, oh, yeah, I see why five is more than four. A lot of people never need this. A lot of people, Piaget said, you know, just go right up the line. But a lot of people do need it. And I'm particularly concerned about special needs kids. We've got a lot of kids in Boston schools, and all schools, not just Boston, that have just really, they're really, for all kinds of reasons, kind of slow and not really catching on too quickly. And these crazy things can be helpful. When you compare us to other cities and towns, uh, we're about the same. Uh, we're about very similar. However, we need to do much, much better, much better. Nicholas Rubino is the driving force behind the change in Boston's math curriculum kids were dropping out. By the third, fourth grade, kids were getting to really dislike math, almost to the point of hating math. Uh, uh, two years ago, I saw a special with Barbara Walters, and she mentioned how she could even uh, balance a checkbook. There are grown-ups that mention that, and they seem to think that it's okay not to do math, but they don't say they can't read. They're, they're, they'll never admit that, a person will never admit that they can't read, because right. they're too embarrassed about that. But they think it's almost chic that it's okay not to do math. And so we were losing people, people dropping out of school left and right, not going into subject areas that demanded a quantitative background, going more into more nebulous areas. So uh, what? We lose, the, we lose that as a society. And that's why the federal government is funding these projects, because they see it economically that we're not producing those kind of people that could compete with other countries. I just wanted to make a point about the, the war in the Middle East, the kind of weaponry out there and things that are going on. A lot of quantitative materials and quantitative uh, uh, structures out there. School administrators hope to expose about 900 teachers from kindergarten to high school level to this new form of math instruction by the end of the year. But the goal of all of this is to empower the students, 
especially minorities and females who tend to lose out on leadership positions in business, in science, and in the overall power structure of this country as a result of a poor start in mathematics. For the 10 o'clock news, I'm Marcus Jones.